know what, Charles Bonston here. Today we're gonna to be talking about specifically how I got into real estate and more importantly, how I got where I am right now. I get this question a lot, I get it through email, I get it through social media, I get it in person all the time, so I'll just clear up exactly how I got to where I am right now and how I got into real estate. So, number one is I sucked at school. I was not good at school, I got a 81 average in high school, I got a 2.8, 2.9 in college, I just was not a good student, except the funny thing is, I just had, I didn't know that I was gonna be successful or wanna be successful or go onto a path to be successful. But the weirdest thing is that when when I was younger, I just had this this inkling. I was just like, a, I was just a different human. I was just a different person. I just really wanted to push myself. I wanted to push myself outside of the comfort zone that I had, the, the, the box that your family, your friends, your influences create. And they say, well, you know, anything outside of this box, it's kinda nervous, it's kinda, I just was not a guy to sit in that little box and just kick around all of my life and just, be there forever and not want to pursue anything else. So we'll get into how I got into real estate. So I graduated college. I start working at Oppenheimer Funds. I get a good job. It's pretty well paying. I start talking with the sales manager and he's like, I think you'd be really good at sales. I was in the su sales support with marketing and e-commerce kind of deal. And the recession hits. I've been there for two and a half years. I just wasn't happy. I just was walking around and it just wasn't an environment that I actually wanted to be in. I was just, you go into work and this was the perfect example that I gave is that I remember one team meeting. It was a team meeting, team meeting. And one of the people sitting there was like, Charles, how was your weekend? We were waiting to get started. I think we were waiting for someone to walk into the conference room for this meeting. And there's about 10 of us. And someone asked me, Charles, how was your weekend? I was like, it was amazing. It was like right around July 4th. I'm like, we went to this barbecue and this funny thing happened and my parents came by and, and I went on for like two or three minutes and people were laughing and everything else. I was like, how was yours? And they're like, weather was good. Weather was good. I'm like, the weather was good? And that's when I just, and then, so like two hours later, I'm in the pantry area and then someone comes in they're like, I just heard the funniest story. I'm like, what are you talking about? They're like, I just, I just heard the July 4th story of the barbecue and your parents and all the things that happened. I'm like, how'd you hear that? I'm like, I, I just told that two hours ago to someone completely on another floor in another group. And that's when I decided, listen, my personality is too big for the corporate nine to five. I need to get out of this. So we're two and a half years. The recession hits of 09 and the CEO or someone right around that level announces layoffs. And I'm like, and I'm like, okay, I guess you're not supposed to do that. Everyone's going crazy, what am I gonna do? And then there's, you know, and listen, in retrospect, um, I was a naive young person who was like, like, it's gonna work out. You know, people, people now, or people then were like, you know, countrywide, Wachovia, these are, Bear Stearns, Lehman Brothers, Merrill Lynch, these are all massive, established, 100-year-old shops, a lot of them, and they're all folding around us. And I was like, I'm just not happy here, so, uh, after the meeting, I walked into this guy's office, and uh, I'll never forget it. I'm sitting across from him. Name is Bob, I won't mention the, the last name. And he doesn't really know who I am, and I'm like, hey, how's it going? I kind of work well below you, and uh, I just heard you announced the layoffs, and I'd love to be on that list. And it, it's like I just told him that him as a male, he's gonna be having a baby. Like, his face was like, you're joking, right? You're, 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 you're what? You want to leave the company? You want to, I'm like, yeah, I'm just really not that happy. So he stands up, he's about 6'4", he's a tall guy, goes by the door, closes the door, looks down at me, and I'm sitting in the chair, and I'm looking up at him, and he's looking down at me, and he goes, what are you going to do, son? Never forget that question. Never forget that question. He looks down, what are you going to do, son? And I just say, I don't know, but it's not this. And sure enough, he goes over to the paper that has all the people that are getting laid off, Oppenheimer Funds, pretty, it's like a mid-sized company. Goes through it, last name, Bot okay, nope, Botenstein's not here, I'm like, can you add me to the list? Sure enough, adds me to the list. This is the funny story, this is the really funny story, is, I hope I'm not gonna get him in trouble like five, six years later, but this is the funny, the funny thing is they uh, flew someone in from Denver, that was where the headquarters or main office or whatever, someone above this person. So they, the day of the layoffs, they call my phone, or they call me, They hey, how's it going? Can you come to conference room 12A? We're gonna be doing a meeting, okay. I knew what was going on, I walk in, and they have this prepared script. Charles, we're really sorry to tell you that you're gonna be laid off. Your bonus is gonna be this, you're da, da, da. And they just go through, and I'm like sitting around like. So the, the woman stops her pre-scripted thing, and she just looks up like waiting for me to be like, oh my God, what am I gonna do? And then sure enough, I was like, oh no, I already knew. And she's like, what? I was like, yeah, no, I already knew. And, and the guy that I put me on the list was like, I was like, oh no, no, oh my God, I'm getting laid off. And you know what, it was the best thing that's ever happened. And, and to give you an honest appraisal, I just had a, a medical thing that sidelined side me for a week. And it was, the it, it was like literally at the point where I like wanted to die. I was like, this is so painful. 
And you know what the funny thing is? I'm glad it happened because I'm eating way better. I'm exercising, ridiculous. I just did a 75 mile ride in New York City. You know, we, and it was, we crushed it. We did it in five hours, 27 minutes. It was like a 13 mile an hour pace, four and a half, uh, four and a half minute miles. It was amazing. But that's the thing is that your worst thing, that worst thing is going to be the best thing. And it was, it was the best thing. I didn't know I was going to get into real estate, signed up for the course. Sure enough, a month later, I'm licensed. I did it like literally three classes a day for two weeks. And this is the funny thing is I had a trip scheduled to visit my parents and it was like March or something or whatever. And there's like a storm in New York the day before I was supposed to work in real estate. I was in visiting my parents. Sunday night, a storm hits in New York and, I, and Monday's my first day in real estate in a totally different industry. And I like barely made my flight. I had like two hours of sleep. Sure enough, got to work and uh, the rest is history. Started at a small, ter small firm downtown, then went to a really big firm and then I started my own firm. And I can get into those. You know, those are two, actually three totally different um, things that you get into, <laughs> to say the least, by starting your own firm, moving between firms, and uh, real estate's amazing, but it's not for everyone. The turnover ratio in six months, I think is like 30%, and then a year, it's like 60% or 70%. Nobody survives in real estate, because it's not an easy job. You know, it looks easy on TV and everything else, and I, you know, until you actually experience it, there's, it's like anything else. Until you actually become a flight attendant, you don't understand how hard it is to not get aggravated and want to punch everyone in the face, you know? But that's my story of how I got in, out of a corporate job and into real estate, and I love it. You guys, you, everyone that's watching this should do that, is do something that they want to do. I hope this helps, and I know that there's other things I'm going to say, but follow me on Instagram, subscribe to the video, and I have another YouTube channel that's all linked down below, and uh, I'll talk to you guys soon.